Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again. And, um, let me go ahead and preface this by saying that, um, um, like, so, like a lot of my other casts, there's gonna be a bunch of moving parts in this one, so don't be surprised if I make a few mistakes here and there. And I got quite a bit to cover, too, so this, uh, might go over long. I'm gonna try to keep this as short as I can, especially in the early part of this, but... Yeah, we'll just see what happens. And uh, for the music, um, this is going to be uh, SimCity 2000, the soundtrack. This is going to be the PlayStation 1 version. So, And um, and I'm just going to go ahead and loop this. I originally wanted to have the, um, the SimCity 3000 soundtrack as well, but I forgot to add it in. Uh, in order for me to do that, I'd have to... One second. Yeah, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna just go ahead and click this, but not if it's, not if it's Doom. I mean, I like the soundtrack, but I'm trying to keep the music here city themed. You'll find out why here in a bit. So let me go ahead. And... And I do have to sound test this. I forgot to do this before I started on this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stay close enough on that. I'll just go ahead and fidget with the um, OBS mixer. Kind of against my better judgment, but I've got this real annoying habit of, uh, of forgetting to put the settings back to what they once were. But like, like I said, I don't, I don't have time to play audio mixer right now. So, um, anyway, to start with, uh, during my stream, footsies. Um, I sucked ass pretty much. Just couldn't really get it. Just kept screwing up here and there and just making bad mistakes, causing me to lose matches. Um, so I, and I did try playing online, but nobody was on. So, so yeah, um, so about an hour and about right about an hour into the stream broke out of that and played some of Zachariah but um I horribly sucked on that just couldn't get anything going and uh it, and failure in Zachariah to me is more justifiable if you ever seen these tables a lot of them they have almost no flow at all I mean, like I said especially the Especially the older retro tables. I mean, it just, they were seemingly put together on a whim. Those that have heard my other casts probably already know what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna say next, but it's like these were designed by Rube Goldberg or something. Just real silly design. But one of the reasons why is just, I've been having a really big problem with oversleeping lately. Um, just, my alarm, but my alarm would go off. Our my alarm would presumably go off. Only to, then, only to realize that uh, I overslept. It's like I, it's like I hadn't even heard my alarm at all or anything. Maybe, maybe my alarm clock's might like, like malfunctioning or something, and maybe I need a, maybe I need some kind of upgrade, or I need to buy a new alarm clock. But like I said, the alarm is set. You know, but I, it's like. I can't even remember me shutting it off. It just, I, I wake up wondering, what, seems a bit late. Look at, look at my clock. <gasps> oh shit, I overslept! And, and I gotta like, I gotta get myself back up, you know, throw myself out of bed, and you know, gotta get everything going. That's what happened with my stream last night. I was about 30 minutes late, 30 minutes late getting that going. So, I'm wondering if, uh, 
I'm wondering if it's either A, my alarm's just not even going off at all, like I said. I might have to retire my alarm clock, or, or B. I just... Maybe it is going off, but either A, I'm literally sleeping through it. Or I just... I simply can't remember me shutting the damn thing off. Could be, could have been any number of those. But aside from that, um, sometime in the evening after my stream, though, um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, those that have seen my other casts, um, know what I'm talking about. It's a channel called Not Just Bikes. They had a brand new episode out. And, um, not just bikes, for those that don't know, um, the guy who does the channel, I think he's like a, either he's a city planner or a civil engineer. Oh, hold on a second. I'm gonna, I'm taking a drink of some Arizona green tea. One of his, uh, one of his biggest influences was, uh, also uh, one of my all-time favorite books called Strong Towns. Um, uh, just, he talks about, uh, basically, uh, it, this is actually one of the inspirations for, uh, playing Sim City music. And, um, later on, for those that were around back when I was streaming it, uh, City Skylines. Yeah, it was this channel and this book that uh, got me into playing that game. And um, but yeah, I, I love me some SimCity though. Back in the '90s, 2000s, and all that, I had regular SimCity for the Super Nintendo. Um, I think I had I had SimCity 2000 for the PlayStation One, 3000 for the uh, PC. Uh, played SimCity Four, but. After, right about that time, I just started losing interest in the game. In the game, it just too repetitious, I guess. That's the word I'm looking for. But yeah, he's. But this time around, he started talking about Lafayette, Louisiana, where just like most every other city in this country, they're financially they're deep in the red. Uh, but mostly because uh, these days. They're not up. They're, they're. It's more. It's the reason why cities are the way they are is because they would rather take on debt than try to run their cities out of profit. You know, they'd rather just take out loans. It's like none of these uh, city planner guys have ever played Sim City. You know, but uh, this, but this particular place here, um, again, Lafayette, Louisiana, they they wanted to do something about their problem. They wanted to get their city out of the red and making it uh, financially productive again. I guess the uh, the mayor there must have read must have read Strong Towns or something. But uh, but it, it talks it talks about that and it actually uh, he unleashed a whole bunch of graphs. Um, I. I forgot to add them to this uh, video, but basically, it's like your, uh, it's like your rundown downtown areas, your inner cities, are actually making more money than, uh, than like the suburbs are. You know, places with big old massive parking lots, the WalMarts, the other big box retail stores and stuff like that, they're actually, um, they're actually losing money, especially when you consider how much space they take up. I mean, I mean, hell, just the big, huge parking lots alone, they're like a waste of space. I mean, they pretty, you know, they pretty much throw away the concept of walkability. You know, everything's too, everything's too car-centric. That's the word I'm looking for. So, but like I said, but this city here, they're, uh, they're trying to do something about it. So I'll probably, I'll probably look into this in the future. Just, uh, see how they're doing and stuff, but... 
But yeah, I I've, I've got to move along though. Um, uh, one other thing that I started doing is uh, I'm probably gonna be shelving um for those for those that have seen me play it, cl uh, Clicker Heroes. It's an idle game. I was off and off uh, playing it while doing um. Yeah, I was um, I was playing it while I was while playing footsies, but um, I've got a feeling I'm gonna be putting that game on the shelf, and then um, I picked up a new one. It's called Crusaders of the Lost Idols. I was actually playing this uh, way back in like the 2010 somewhere, but uh, I got it on I got it on Steam. I back in the day I was playing it on a on a gaming website called Congregate. I don't know if anybody's heard of it. But uh, I recently downloaded it on Steam. Um, but it's it's kind of heading the same way that Clicker Heroes is heading. It's just it's getting to where that I'm I'm running into a I'm basically running into a brick wall now. It just I'm almost forced to just shut it off and just um, oh god how how did I want to put it? But just resort to only offline production. I'm doing this with Cookie Clicker now. It's probably one of the reasons why idle games are in such a short phase with me. Because it, I just reach a sticking point on them. You know, shut the game off. Check back like the next day. Still find that I haven't progressed for shit. And eventually end up shelving the game altogether. I think Crusaders is heading that way too. Just like Clicker Heroes. And I guess while I'm here... Right, right now I'm clicking, but um, to be fair with this game here, it's one of the few that's actually uh, click friendly. A lot of uh, a lot of other idle games I've played, you you can either go you can go the clicking path or the idling path, but not both. Um, Clicker Heroes is like that. Um, I forget the name of it. Oh, Realm Grinder was another idle game that's like that. You can either go the click route. Or the, or the idle route, but not both. In this game here, you can, uh, you can go clicking or idling, and they're both uh, equally good. Like I said, it's... Oh, and also, I'm using, um, for clicking, I'm not even, um, I'm not even actually mouse clicking at all. I'm doing what's called, I'm using what are called mouse keys. Um, shift, alt, and, and uh, number lock, you get those at the same time, and the, the mouse keys pop up will appear, you just enable it. So what I'm doing now is, uh, I'm hitting five and plus on the number pad. how that works but like, like I said like I said this game along with the other idle games I'm I'm pretty much at a sticking point now it's one of those where I'm just gonna have to shut down and just check back the next day and see how far I progressed save up for that. Okay, I gotta break off just for a moment. Oh. 
And then one other thing I did is, uh, for those that have uh, checked out my recent casts, I recently subscribed to a subscribed to a channel uh, called Janet. She's a uh, she's a retro gamer. She's uh, based she's Japanese, but I think she's also bilingual as well. Like she also speaks English. But uh, she does she her channel consists of all like retro games that she's playing and stuff. But unlike uh, but I think unlike most other retro gamers. I don't think she uses any emulators at all. Like, all of her games are used with, like, actual ROM chips. Like, I don't think she actually has the actual arcade cabinets. But she'll, uh... She, she does her, uh... She, she, does her, she does her own homebrew thing. I forget the... I forget the actual name. The name of the thing that she uses, but, uh... But she'll, uh... She has it all like hooked up to her TV or whatever, but she'll have the actual motherboards, you know, the motherboards and all that. I think, um, oh, what was it? Come on, Joe. Uh, but it was, it was, it was one of my recent casts where I, I talked about one of her videos. I think it was called a uh, mocap boxing. She actually showed the uh, the process she did to set up all the sensors like in her sliding her sliding door sliding glass door and then she uh she showed like the motherboard that had all the chips and all that and she showed the boxing gloves that she was going to use and all that but yeah like i said it's a whole it's a whole brew design there's like no emulation at all but um one mini uh one thing that did come up on my youtube recommendations is a uh, virtual fighter like she's playing this game too like holy shit um for those that have seen my, um, it was my uh, old, old fighting game tier list. I think I mentioned this. Um, but I, th I thought at the time that I first checked out Virtua Fighter back in the late 80s, kind of find out later that it really didn't come out until the early 90s. So I'm really having to rack my brain and where the hell did I play it then? Because I... In my, in my mind, I recall me playing it somewhere in the late 80s at this bowling alley that I used to hang out at back when I was a teenager. But uh, it was also uh, it was also unique in the fact that uh, of all the people that I've seen play it, that they weren't... I don't think... They weren't really trying to, trying to win games as much as they were just trying to see what kind of cool moves all the characters had. Because this came out around... The, or at the time, I thought it came out around the late around the late eighties, right around the time that Street Fighter One first came out. It was where all these special moves were super duper hard to do. But if you did them or let me rephrase that. Um you know, spe special moves that were a uh, were a totally foreign thing back then. Nobody knew about them. So when somebody managed to shoot off Ryu you know Ryu's head Hulkin, you were like, whoa, what the hell was that? You know, that that kind of thing. Virtual Fighter was like that as well. So people were sitting here trying out different button and joystick combinations to see what kind of what kind of moves they can get. But that's what I had in my head at the time. But like I said, I guess the game didn't come out until the early 90s. So now I'm trying to figure out then where the hell did I where the hell did I first see this then? So, but anyway, um. She um she had a whole bunch of these videos. I think she did one video for each character. So I'm I've watched uh I've watched Akira. Um I've watched uh and I watched Kage as well. But uh I do plan on Pi was the other one. P A I Pi that's her name. But uh I watched uh I watched a walkthrough with her as well. So yeah, but eventually I'm gonna be watching them all though. And I believe Virtua Fighter was the very, very first 3D fighter. Like it came out before Tekken did. Oh, I'm up. Uh, I'm taking another drink here. Hold on.
So yeah, um, Virtual Fighter, the granddaddy of them all. And uh, it's also a fighting game that I really do want to play, Virtual Fighter 5. I have watched, um, I watched a fair amount of YouTube videos on it. Um, just read a bunch of source material on it, or what have you. But unfortunately, uh, Virtual Fighter is console only. They don't have it for the PC. Or they might have it for what's called Fightcade. Um, it's just, uh, it's a pro, it's a program where you can download ROMs and just play, basically it's an emulator, but, uh, problem is, is I, I can't get that damn thing to work, so, and when the, um, and one of the, when, when one of the biggest problems that, or that I found that Fight Kate has is, is actually the, the solutions to the problem then yeah that's a problem with me so so yeah basically fight kate is until further notice unusable so until then so basically basically what i was trying what i'm trying to say is uh virtual fighter is console only and i'm a pc guy so one could dream And then, um, one other thing, this kind of, I forgot to do this last night, but, uh, like I often do, um, on me, the website's called Medium, it's just, it's where a whole bunch of writers come together and write stuff, um, one of the writers that I check out regularly is Jessica Wildfire, but, uh, I forgot to do it last night, so, I didn't really have a chance to read it, but, um, I, the title I liked it immediately. I liked it up. Um, I liked it already. Like, oh, and I uh, I haven't read this article, so I'm just kind of I'm kind of hashing it out here in this video. It was one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to speed through everything else as quickly as possible. Didn't seem to happen, but but Vladimir Putin has already won, but no one wants to admit it. And um, for those that I. For those that seen uh, yesterday's cast, I, yesterday or the day before, I talked. There was a, there was a second thought video that kind of talked about it. it. Basically, Putin has the world by the balls. I mean, is he or is he not a madman? Is he legit crazy and just kind of like uh, North Korea? Is he is he like that? Is he a legit nut job or is he just trying to manipulate people? So yeah, it seems the uh, the rest of the world, especially the Ukraine, are kind of at his mercy. Russia's too big to fail. So. When Germany announced, oh, <laughs> oh no! So seems Germany's keeping Russia in business. It plans to keep buying oil and natural gas from Russia. Yeah, even as Vladimir Putin continues committing every war crime on the books. So it seems Germany is part of the problem. I mean, I get they have a country to run, but still. China came out in support of Russia. Refusing to condemn the invasion of Ukraine and calling them a chief strategic partner. Yeah. Yeah, it's from looking at it right now, it's like at the very, at least Germany and China, they're basically uh, keeping Russia afloat right now. I'll bet, if, uh, I'll bet if those two countries boycotted Russia, that would have shut down Putin right there, because there goes his resources. Two thousand eight, back when Americans were asked to bail out the very banks and predatory lenders that crashed the economy. Yep. Big fiasco in this country. Used our money to reward themselves with huge bonuses and buy back stocks. Um, one of the uh, one of the second thought videos that I watched, they were talking about this very same thing. Even while they hiked up prices and laid off workers. None of them saw a single day of justice. Doing all the same things that are about to collapse the economy again. We have stuff by, we were told they were Yep. 
too big to fail. We relied on our enemy. Okay, so... So basically, Jessica's on the side of... He's not insane. Same column, so keep predicting the end of the pandemic. Yeah, I'm starting to see that too in some of these videos. I can't remember the names of the channels. Here, I gotta double check something real quick. Okay, so you guys can't see my cursor. selfish, but they're not psychopaths. Nope. Psychopath. Yeah, like... But, from, um, from my perspective, I didn't... didn't really pay... really didn't... I really didn't pay much attention to the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. I just knew that the Ukraine was being invaded. And, uh, one thing that kind of struck me is, uh, they're actually going old school about it. Like, they weren't, uh, they weren't, as far as I know, they weren't launching nukes or anything. Like, like I, like I said, I think Putin was just going old school. Like, just sending the troops and tanks and whatnot. This is something uh, I probably have to read into, uh, you know, outside of doing this cast video. They keep dangling peace at evacuation routes and bombing civilians as they try to flee. One pepper with landmines. This feels intentional. Yep. But, but like I said, I've heard, I'm starting to see uh, videos pop up in my YouTube recommendations that are saying this, that, uh, that, uh, the Ru Russia's attack is doomed to fail. Okay, yeah, it's, Putin has divided us all. Yep. Is he or isn't he crazy? Actually, I just I just remembered. Um what um what the second thought guy what the, what he what he's what his conclusion was made total sense to me. Putin is not crazy, but he's been in power for twenty years, so he's he's so used to getting what he wants. You know, he's he's so used to having things going his way that he just never thinks about the consequences. He's not a nut job. But like like I say, he's just he's used to having it all. That's 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 what it was. So I'm kinda I'm kinda seeing that too. I mean nobody's gonna say no to him. Kind of, so, I almost want to say Donald Trump was kind of like that, too. 
you know, he's so well, you know, with him being like real wealthy and powerful, especially as president, no one's really going to say no to him. So he can just pretty much do what he wants. So Putin's kind of like that too. I know, uh, I know, uh, and I also know that Putin, he was also having journalists assassinated too. Okay, but otherwise, yeah, this, this looks like something that I would probably have to just watch on my own. Especially when I've already gone over the 30 minute mark on this. Putin doesn't need to conquer Europe. Oh, God. I gotta... Okay, I have to go on my browser. I don't know the name of the book. It's a... It's a World of Warcraft novel. War Crimes. That's what it's called. Um, but it, it kind of reminds me of that book. Uh, in the For those that have never played WoW, um, Garrosh, Hellscream, I, he's basically... He was one... Uh, the, the short version, he's extremely evil. Like, he just... He wants to conquer the world. He, he wants to conquer the world and all that. Basically, you know, you're... Your, your psychopathic arch nemesis or your your arch enemy that kind of thing um he's but he he does stand trial for the for all the crimes that he committed all the atrocities but it wasn't a it wasn't it wasn't gonna be this wasn't gonna be like a guilty not guilty I mean his guilt has been easily proven so the decision came to be whether they were gonna exile him or execute him that was what the uh, this court was gonna decide on, whether to put him in exile or execute him outright. But um, but at the uh, kind of a spoiler alert here, uh, but I'm trying to I'm trying to remember how the how the book ended, but it didn't end with a it didn't end with a court decision. God, I'm trying to, I'm racking my brain here. Or let me, let me take another drink of Arizona Green Tea while I'm at it. Oh, that was what, that was what happened. Um, like the, I think it was like the, Whatever their version of a court reporter is, he actually um he actually conjured a conjured a spell that that just totally fucked up the whole courtroom and opened a portal for Garrosh Elscreen to pass through. So this whole thing, so this whole entire court was basically meaningless. They had planned his escape from the outset. So they kind of so that book there kind of reminds me here. Let me. Let me go ahead and do this. Come on, scroll.
should almost have put this on my paint program. Almost done. There. Just just to make it easier. But yeah, it But yeah, that headline Putin doesn't need to conquer Europe kind of it kind of paralleled with the uh, with that book. Doesn't even have yeah, he doesn't have to invade other countries. <laughs> okay. But yeah, like I said, it looks like the rest of this. And I've already gone grossly over long. I mean, I was expecting this cast to probably last like... Like around 20... 20, 30 minutes tops. I'm already at uh, 36 minutes, so... Welcome to the climate war. Okay, here we go. Putin has touched off the climate wars, a series of conflicts that experts have been predicting for a solid decade now. Ukraine is just the beginning. The societies that control the natural resources will enjoy the most power. The ones that rely on imports will lose their power without a sustainable energy plan. The biggest loser is the planet and our future. Days of dominance are over. Putin knows this too. Okay. Okay, but otherwise, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. Yeah, I, like I said, I kind of went over long in a in that in a I want to. I want to be. I want to read more of that article, but you know, kind of on my own time, so I can digest all of it. But yeah, it looks like look like it's some pretty intense stuff. So, but otherwise, I'm just, once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill it here. Uh, but thanks for tuning in and listening to me, though, everybody. I appreciate that. Always do. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning, um, which will be my last one for the week. So, but until then. Thanks again for coming by, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye for now.